Hello everyone, welcome to Boxing Science. This video is sponsored by Saga Fitness. Saga Fitness are specialists in blood flow restriction training and you can get their BFR cuffs by visiting the link in the description and also quoting Boxing Science to save yourself a 10% discount. Today I'm going to be covering a very important video, uh, something that I've been wanting to share for quite a while and it's the benefits and application of the bench press throw. Now the bench press throw is performed with a barbell where it's a little bit like a bench press but instead of holding it at the top, we're going a little bit lighter and we're throwing it, accelerating through the movement and then a coach or a partner will catch the bar. Now, the reason why I've wanted to share this video for quite a while is because every time I post it on Instagram, I get a few comments in the comment box basically saying that this is a dangerous exercise, it's too risky, what are the benefits, etc. And I can, realize, I can see why people might see it as being quite risky and we always go on the risk versus reward continuum. You know, we want to be getting um, exercises that have high amounts of reward with low amount of risk. With the bench press throw, we recognize the risk, but there are also massive rewards. So instead of people doing uh, bench press throws, people might go for low risk exercises, such as a med ball chest slam or med ball chest pass. But we've done a little bit of research down here at the Boxing Science Performance Center, and we've seen some huge results in using the bench press throw. I'm gonna go through some of the benefits today. I'm gonna to say about the application, and then I'm gonna go through a coaching demonstration. Okay, so the benefits of this exercise is that it increases hand speed. It's done at a lower weight than you would do a bench press or a dumbbell chest press, done with higher amount of speed, and it's encouraging acceleration all the way through the movement. When we are doing uh, like a, a normal bench press, the acceleration actually finishes halfway through the movement. So we've got to make sure that we're wanting to accelerate all the way through to the, uh, to the end range of the punch. So the bench press throw is quite applicable to boxing because we're increasing acceleration all the way through the movement up until release of the bar. It increases momentum and it also increases the upper body strength stretch shortening cycle so we need to stretch shortening cycle because we have little twitches before we throw maybe like combination punching as well and the bench press throw because it's a little bit higher loaded than a med ball chest pass it will overload that stretch shortening cycle a little bit more so that's the reasons why we use it we're saying about increased momentum momentum is a big contributor to punching force 90% of a punch is explained by the amount of momentum of the punch. So momentum is mass times velocity. And if you're a keen follower of boxing science, you'll have seen on the science behind the punch, uh, one of our best videos, uh, best performing videos on uh, YouTube, where we're talking about basically the impulse momentum relationship and how we want to either increase impulse or increase momentum to be able to create a fast and hard punch. Now, what we found with uh, the momentum and mass times velocity is that it's two times higher than the med ball chest pass. Um, this was done just, bit, it's not a published study because it's only me and Tommy having to play about uh, with the gym and wear and with the push band. And basically we compared the amount of velocity that we were able to produce at different loads on the med ball uh, chest pass and also on the bench press throw. And what we found was the highest amount of momentum in the med ball chest pass was as heavy as it got. So that was around about 12 or 14 kilos. So that's a really heavy med ball chest pass compared to kind of what I've seen across uh, social media. You know, athletes probably throwing eight kilos or six kilos and, and being really fast and very geared towards like the end range of the force velocity curve, looking at really fast and explosive actions. That's on 12 or 14 kilos. The optimal one met max, and we're going to be talking about this in a little bit, is between 38 and 50% one met max. And we found that that optimal zone was two times increased momentum value than it would be on a med ball chest pass. So this is making the bench press throw as a strength speed or speed strength exercise two times more effective and more transferred to successful boxing performance. So we need to make sure in a training camp, everything's done with optimal intent and optimal adaptation. So if we're looking at like the bench press throw versus a med ball chest pass, I would opt to do the bench press throw instead, uh, just based off of these figures. And we're actually, what we're wanting to do 
is actually look into this a little bit more in depth and look at the correlations between uh, loading and uh, the landmine punch throw. So we can see a direct correlation between bench press throw performance and landmine punch throw performance. So in terms of the application, we want to be performing this anywhere between 30 and 50% one rep max. The reason why is that the increased momentum values was performed around about this area. This is very individualized. Um, so if you were going to do this with an athlete and you've got access to a push band or gym aware, I would try and do this little experiment uh, yourself to see what is the optimal zone for each athlete. Uh, we do this with trap bar jumps, we do it with loaded jumps as well. We see what is the optimal training, like kind of percentage one rep max to perform our ballistic, loaded ballistic exercises. So we did this with the bench press and we saw that with myself and Tommy, it ranged between 30 and 50% of the one rep max. Now, if you're doing it blind and not doing it with any kind of numbers at all with the bench press throw, I would go down the lesser end first and start building up towards 50% one rep max, uh, just due to safety aspect and also just being accustomed to actually throwing that weight. Me and Tommy have been in the weight room for a considerable amount of years and done bench press throw quite a lot. That's probably why we were able to get up to this top end here. If you haven't done that before, you're probably best off starting around about 30% one rep max. Perform anywhere between three and five repetitions for three to four sets. So the final point is to make sure that you have a partner or coach to assist you to make sure that they're catching the ball. At Boxing Science, I can safely say during the 10 years that we've been running now, that we've been doing the bench press throw, that we haven't dropped the bar once. You gotta make sure that your athlete knows what they're doing. You gotta make sure they have a safe setup and also that you're catching the bar right. And we're gonna show you all these three aspects in our coaching demonstration right now. I get uh, messages or uh, comments on Instagram when I post about the bench press throw, about it being dangerous. These three key steps are making sure that it's a really safe and effective exercise to use to improve hand speed and upper body explosiveness. So let's uh, kick on with the coaching demonstration. So when doing the bench press throw, we want to focus on three things. The setup, the coach, and the athlete, making sure that they get the right technique. First of all, the setup. So we want the bench, of course, in the middle of the rack. And also we want some safety pins there to make sure that it's there. If we do have the case of dropping the bar, that there's some safety pins there to catch the bar. Bench wants to be quite close and underneath the bar before the setup. What you don't want is that the bench being too far back this way. So then the partner or coach has to lean over to catch the bar because that will increase kind of that weight load demand and that probably that increased likelihood of uh, dropping it on the athlete. Now we're going to bring in the coach. So Tommy's going to be our coach today. Tommy is going to get into a split stance instead of being in a bilateral stance. And bilateral stance will increase the likelihood of leaning forward or leaning back and losing balance. Being in that bilateral stance will make Tommy more stable when catching the bar. And then when I throw the bar, it's gonna make sure that he's gonna catch it in alternate grip. So he's catching with one overhand, catching one underhand. This just creates a little bit more stability. And when he catches it as well, he's going to catch it and go with the movement as it goes up. He's not gonna meet the bar, and try and catch it straight away. It's going to be easier to catch if he actually comes up and flows with that movement. When we uh, pull it, when we're on the bench, we want to be pulling down, and we don't want to be going down too fast. The faster that we go, the less stable that you, your throw might be, and this might change the bar trajectory either from side to side or put, punching it out in front. We need to make sure that we're have a straight path when we're throwing the bar, so you've got to make sure that it's coming down nice and slow. Also, if you're coming down too fast, you're probably overwhelming then pectoral muscles and lat muscles to be able to control that movement coming down, and you'll probably see an internal rotation of the humeral head. This will increase that tension across the anterior capsule of the shoulder, probably may increase the likelihood of any kind of shoulder injuries happening here. So you're pulling it down, creating a strong foundation, and then when we're accelerating up, we're trying to throw it as fast as we can, maximum intent, keeping the core nice and tense, keeping feet against the floor, 
because what we don't want to see is the feet moving around when we're pressing up, pushing our feet into the floor. We're keeping the core nice and tight to make sure that our body's stable whilst we're throwing the bar. So we're going to grab the bar just wider than shoulder width apart. Take that deep breath in. Nice and slowly down to the chest. Throw and release. Deep breath in. Pulling down using lats. Keep your core tense. And you can notice as I'm throwing, I'm keeping my body nice and stable. It's only my arms that are moving. So I'm just bouncing it off the chest. Make sure that I'm accelerating all the way through the movement. And once you finish, rack it. And then that's bench press throw. 